Hello, today I wanted to talk about my observations since quitting social media again. I've always been very much someone who is against social media and can see very clearly the negative effects that it has on people's lives, people's attention and focus and their presence among others. And I know this in my heart and I believe it very wholly and yet somehow I downloaded Instagram again and Snapchat after a whole almost two years of not being on it. Um, I downloaded it back in September for university because I guess my sort of reasoning at the time was, well, everyone has it and if I don't, then I don't have a social life and how will I find out what societies are up to and meet people and organize things and what if all my friends have a group chat without me and, you know, all of these coping ideas and coping behaviors that sort of pushed me to get back onto it. And I guess I sort of fooled myself in thinking that, you know, I'd only check it once a day and I'd be so conscious with the way that I used it because I didn't use it for so long. And of course I'm gonna be able to resist now, but that was not the way that it turned out as you can probably tell from my tone of voice. Um, I'm naturally, I think I'm naturally someone with quite an addictive personality. And so once I allow something at all addictive into my life it ends up sort of slowly taking over and taking over until I'm up until 2 a.m. scrolling on Instagram reels which is the harsh reality of it and to be honest I don't know many people who can control themselves around things like Instagram I think in my opinion there is no healthy way to use it maybe you know you curate your feed to be so uplifting and inspiring but even then you're comparing yourself subconsciously to people that aren't in your real life, people that you aren't, you know, competing with necessarily. But it feels like a competition. It forces you to feel like you're not enough and feel like you have to perform in order to, I don't know, put out a certain, only a certain part of yourself on social media, not the full aspect and full embodiment of yourself. It's only the best part, the highlight reel. But yeah, I had a sort of epiphany moment a couple of weeks ago where my screen time was just way, way too high and I thought to myself, finally, after so much time wasted, what on earth am I doing with my life? Why am I here? Why am I allowing this stupid app that I know is created f to sell my attention and to waste my time and to get me addicted? Why on earth am I still here? I know it's bad. I know that it hasn't brought anything good into my life since I downloaded it. So I did the whole dramatic I'm leaving Instagram, guys. Well, it wasn't that dramatic. I just texted a few of my close friends, but I worried instantly. I was instantly so anxious that I wasn't, you know, part of the social sphere anymore, that I was missing out, that I had, you know, I guess I had FOMO in a way. And I was worried because a group chat with all of my best friends was on that. And I was like, oh, how are they going to reach me now? And you know what? We just made a WhatsApp group. It was not that deep. But since I have left and since I've sort of been refinding what it means to be myself again and not the me that is hooked on social media. I've had a lot of realizations and observations about the way that the world works and how hooked especially our generation is on it. I feel like one of the most poignant things that stood out for me was just how much of our time we spend taking photos for Instagram. Like in every, almost every social event that I went to, we had to set aside time to be like, all right guys, let's pose and get pretty and look good for Instagram. <laughs> yes, the photos were nice, but they weren't authentic. I don't treasure those photos as much as I do. Candid ones that someone took when, you know, we weren't paying attention or where I laugh without worrying if my smile looks weird or worrying that I'm showing my best angle instead of just being, I don't know, wholly present. Because that's the thing is you always have to compare yourself to a perfect ideal that isn't even real at the end of the day. I feel like that's such an obvious point to make, but there's a difference between knowing and believing. In kind of getting back to my normal state of mind, I've noticed just how distracted everyone tends to be as well. It's almost like people aren't present anymore. Like their mind is always somewhere else. Even if they're physically with you, you know, they're thinking about who texted them or who posted what or I don't know, whatever else you worry about with social media. Like I had a friend who I hadn't seen in a while and text me and say, oh, let's meet up for lunch. Like, 
I haven't seen you in a long time, it'll be good to catch up. So we met for lunch. The whole time she was on her phone. I don't think she looked up once. She was like giggling, scrolling the whole time. It was upsetting and I tried not to be too annoyed at it because I understand, you know, she's at one stage in her own journey and for me to judge from a different point isn't necessarily beneficial. She's my friend and the only thing I can do is love her and try and be an example. But either way, it was upsetting to have someone there and yet not really be there. And that's another thing I guess that I've noticed is that people don't really know how to be bored anymore. Like in any moment of pause in the conversation or any time that they, you know, feel awkward or uncomfortable, it's just so natural to reach for your phone, scroll through it quickly, check the messages, check what's, I don't know, trending or current on social media. We never used to have that, I feel. People never used to be able to reach for that instant you know, distraction from boredom. Our grandparents, when they had nothing to do, they would just sit there until, you know, something came to mind, they thought of something creative. And that was the way that all the best ideas were born, all the most fun games that come about, I feel, when you're so bored that your mind just goes to such creative places and it isn't full of the noise of hundreds of thousands of different pieces of information. That's one of the big things I've noticed myself actually, is just how much more creatively inspired and how much more motivation and drive I have now that my brain isn't so full of gunk. Like I wake up in the morning and my head is clear. Like I don't know how else to describe it other than I just have so much presence and I don't know, I'm not, I'm not, thinking of a hundred thousand different things like oh what recipes should I try or I want to buy this piece of clothing or her makeup looks really good or that sort of thing I wake up and it's like I'm I'm just there and that's all I have to think about is you know doing my morning routine and then getting on with my day it's not like I wake up anymore and the first thing I do is check who's texted me check what's new and I'm so grateful for that I wish everyone could experience that it feels like, I don't know if this is quite a nerdy example, but it's like, the, if you guys know Plato's allegory of the cave, it's where there are a bunch of prisoners in a cave and all they see of the world is the reflection of the shadows from things outside. And they think that that is the whole world. But then one day, one prisoner manages to escape and he goes outside and he sees the sun and he sees all these real world things. and comes back into the cave and he tries to tell them like look guys there's a whole world outside there that's so beautiful that you guys just aren't able to see and in different interpretations different endings happen but the most commonly used one is that they reject him and they kill him because they're so because they think he's lying or he's trying to trick them from leaving the cave that's how it feels sometimes Maybe that's a little egotistical of me to say, but it feels like I've woken up to something so poignant and such a poison in our society and everyone is so addicted to it that they rationalize and they stone you for trying to bring the light to them. I don't know. I think that's all I really have to say for today though. God bless and goodbye.